In this video, we're going to create a template folder to make starting a new app a lot simpler. So we go to the C drive, and then we're going to open up Dragonfire SDK. Within that folder, you'll see a folder called My First App, and this will be our template folder. But first, we want to open it up and take a look inside. We can see that there are four files and one folder. This file here, My First App, has a number 8 there. That means it was created with the version 2008 for Visual C++. So let's go ahead and double click on that. And we notice that when 2010 Express opens up, it tells us we need to convert the file. That's because this is 2010 and the file we're using was created in two, using 2008. So we're going to click Next. We don't need to keep a backup of this file. You can if you want to, but I've done it before, so I know that it'll be fine. Click Next. And it says it's ready to convert, so go ahead and click Finish. You can see on the left-hand side, within our My First App folder, we have some more files coming up. So we're going to say, no, we don't want to see the conversion log. We'll close that. Over here, we can see that the 8 is now a 10, so it's now best suited for the 2010 version. We've got an extra folder here. I'm just going to delete that folder. We don't need that. And I don't need the upgrade log. All right. So let's just take a look at this file really quickly. In the Solution Explorer, you'll see my first app here, so click on the down arrow, or it might be a plus sign. And then besides source files, we'll click on that again. And then we'll see app.cpp, and cpp stands for C++. We'll double click on that, and I'm just going to expand my view. Okay, so we can see in here that we've got lots of information because this My First App is actually a sample app. You can explore it on your own. Just press F5 to get the simulator to pop up. But we want it cleaned up so that we have a fresh one and we don't have to make any changes the next time we want to create our own app. So let's take a look at the four sections that you must have in every iPad app. The first one is pound include dragonfiresdk.h, and that's enclosed in quotation marks. That tells it to use the Dragonfire SDK commands. Otherwise, the commands that we're going to use in our apps won't work, and you'll get an error message. That must be at the very top. Right here, this is part of the command for the sample app. We're just going to delete that. We don't need it. The second piece that we need in an app is the void app main bracket bracket and those are just rounded brackets. The void app main section includes all your initialization code. That means anything you want to create like an item, an object, etc. that your app will need when it's running will be included in that section. So we don't need any of this information in your apps. We're going to delete that. But we do need to leave the two curly brackets. That tells when the app code starts and when it ends. So any app main code needs to go in there. The third piece that we need in every iPad app is the app exit section. So void app exit, round bracket, round bracket, curly bracket, curly bracket. All your application exit code goes here. That means if your app is closed, this is what you want to happen. So if you're, you get a phone call, if you press the home button, what do you want the app to do? You're not required to have anything in this section in order for your app to run, but you still need the section. And the last section that you absolutely must have inside of every iPad app or iPhone app is the on timer piece. This is a loop section. On timer is called 30 times per second. Again, you don't need anything in this section, but you must have it. So now we have the four pieces of information that must be included in every iPad app. We can even take out this section up here. We don't need it. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. File, save all. We're going to go ahead and close C++. 
And let's take a look at the My First App folder again. The last thing we want to do is add two folders. So open up your debug folder. Open up your assets folder. Assets are resources. Right now you have a folder called images. All of your images need to be saved in your images folder. And right now you've got the Dragonfire image that's used by the sample app. We're just going to delete that image because we don't need it. We want to go back. With our images folder, we want to create a sounds folder. And be careful if you include a capital S here, you need to include a capital S in all of your programming later on. But we'll talk about that when we actually do an app that requires sound. Okay, so we've got our images folder, our sounds folder. So we can now go back to the Dragonfire folder. We've got my first app right there. It's exactly like we want it to look. So we're going to make a copy of this. I'm always scared I'm going to accidentally mess up the template folder. So I'm going to copy this folder. Now some systems when they paste will just automatically make a copy of the file and some systems um, will say you can't duplicate it in your thing. So I'm just going to paste it somewhere else and then drag it in here after renaming it. So I'm just going to paste it on my desktop for now. Right click on it, rename it, and I want this to be my template. So I can call it whatever I want to, Dragonfire folder, my first app, but I want the word template in there just so I don't forget about it. that this is important and I don't want to actually use it. So I'm going to drag it back in here. Now from now on I'll just make a copy of that and name it whatever the concept of the app is going to be. And now I'm actually ready to start programming my very first iPad app. I'm so excited, I just can't wait.